Hey guys, Adrian here from DigitalDojos.com and today we're going to be talking about the Apple October 22nd iPad centered event. Uh, the event was finished up this morning. I've been up all day literally posting out tons of articles, posting out tons of content related to that of the event and uh, I just want to cover it. I want to kind of talk about a recap of what happened but also give my thoughts and opinions. So that's also what this, this video is mainly going to be addressing, my personal opinions behind the releases, what they did and why they did it. Um, my full recap, just the pure what happened at the event can be viewed over at digitaldojos.com. I'll leave a link down below to the uh, actual blog post I wrote. Um, and I'm going to be referencing that here. So first off, the event was, you know, started off by Tim Cook as it always is, hosting and, and talking about the sales figures. They were already, you know, talking about the 9 million iPhones sold, that being between the 5S and 5C. They talked about iOS 7 adoption rate, which is pretty high up at 64%. $13 billion to pay out to developers. So all that good stuff, you know, the the upcoming sales figures and all that. And then they went into OS X Mavericks. OS X Mavericks release, um, they recapped a lot of the features that we knew about OS X Mavericks. Multiple display support, notifications, finder tabs, tags, all that good stuff. I have a couple of videos coming out on Mavericks very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. That said, they announced that Mavericks would actually be introduced for free, and, and they released it today via the Mac App Store. I'm going to get into my opinions and all that after I address everything that was announced. Shortly after that, they did the new MacBook Pros. The new MacBook Pros were announced with the Haswell Generation Intel chips. Uh, lowered price points, the 13-inch comes in at baseline at 2.4 GHz for, I think, 1,300, while the 15-inch Retina comes in at 2,000 baseline. Uh, this has the fourth-generation Intel Haswell. I, Iris Intel Iris Pro graphics update, the faster PCIe storage or SSD storage, and they now discontinued the non-Retina MacBook Pros. The new Mac Pro was next up in the Mac lineup. They finally gave insight into that of the Mac Pro, the specs featuring the Intel Xeon processors, Dual Fire Pro GPUs, a lot of the stuff we already knew, the 4K support for our 4K display support. But they finally dropped the price baseline starting at three thousand dollars for the baseline Mac Pro and obviously that's going to soar much higher in terms of upgrading because that is a pro light, uh, pro machine. Moving on, the iLife and iWork suite were upgraded highly. They're now upgraded for iOS 7 and OS 10. So they've now seen all new UI changes for both suites. A really powerful suite from Pages, Keynote, Numbers, iMovie, GarageBand, all of that stuff saw all new UI changes, much more smoother, really cool new features and just a, a nice new uh, interface all free if you are an existing iWork and iLife user if you have it on your Mac or if you are a new if you purchase from today a new i uh, a new iOS device or Macintosh then you get those upgrades free if you haven't purchased it prior then you do need to pay for the upgrade iPad Air and the iPad Mini were last but not least of course this is what the main focus of the event was the iPad Air is the fifth gen essentially the fifth gen iPad replacing that of the fourth gen with Retina. It is faster. It is called the iPad Air because it is much more thinner, much more lighter. It weighs in now at one pound, so really, really light. New thinner design, much more thinner on the bezel. I'll throw up some pictures here. Um, it still features that Retina 9.7 inch display, so this is the full display iPad with all that Retina you know, beauty. The A7 CPU, so it's much more faster. The M7 uh, motion chip, so you can track all that. And it's priced at $499 baseline like the traditional iPad always is. Um, that said, uh, I guess the bigger news would that be the iPad mini second gen. A lot of us were waiting for this. The retina display finally got its update with this great form factor. It got, um, some updates in terms of the A7 chip, the M7 motion chip, though they did raise the baseline price since the retina display was incorporated. So now it's at 399 and the iPad mini first gen is at 329 for the first gen without retina display. So that said, that about wrapped up the event. So what are my thoughts on all this? Well, there was a lot of free. That was a cool thing that Apple did. I think it was really cool because it's a smart and, and interesting move because they're, they're doing the whole free welcome into the walled garden. So we're welcoming you in into this garden where everything we control, which is a really smart move in the fact that, look, they're giving Mavericks free, which I think is a testament to show how much, one, Apple, the money they have. And they could have easily charged $15, $20, uh, as they normally do with their updates, like twenty nine ninety nine, and that's a really cheap upgrade as comparison to that of Windows upgrades. But they did it completely free, and I, I think the reasoning behind that, and they didn't just do this on a small scale. They did this to unify across the line. iMacs back to two thousand seven can now upgrade to Mavericks, so they're getting everybody on Mavericks. But that said, you have the Mac App Store, you have the iTunes Store. Um, that pretty much controls the market in terms of the apps you're going to get, so they know they're going to make money behind that, I believe. I think that was really the aim. 
uh, and you know the iWork suites, the iLife suites, free if you are a current user of those. But if not, you can get those again. Those those are, in my opinion, dirt cheap in my opinion in terms of what they offer you in, in a productivity suite. Twenty dollars for pages. Um, if, if you're comparing that to Microsoft Word, etc., and I'm a huge fan of those software suites. So the software, and they did really cool things in terms of the free updates. Mavericks are both upgrading now on both of my machines. My Air actually is already on Mavericks. Um, hardware announcements. The MacBook Pro, we pretty much expected this. It's faster, it's better, it's the same Retina MacBook Pro. We saw them discontinue the non-Retina line. I think that was just a thing. You know, they're, they're starting to phase out the ret non-Retina devices. The Mac Pro, really awesome new design machine. Finally, great to see a upgrade on the pro end of the Mac. It's been too long since Apple has done this. Manufactured in the USA, I think that's a reason we didn't really hear about this prior to, um, you know, I think when they manufacture, this is really cool that they're manufacturing in the USA, but um, they leaked this out, or not leaked it, or they announced it, I guess, a couple months ago, and everybody was wondering, you know, what's that price point? What is it gonna be priced at? $3,000, well, yeah, there's always an Apple tax to these hardware that they're announcing. Um, and they control a lot of the hardware in terms of how they, you know, the upgradeability, which is a problem. This is a pro machine. The users who will be buying this machine specifically will be getting tenfold what they buy it for. You know, if you understand, like if I buy it for three thousand dollars, which a lot of users I don't think will buy it. You know, they're going to spec it out. They're going to buy a harder drive storage. They're going to buy better CPUs, all that jazz. Um, these are people who use these for a living, who use this to create their living, whether it's recording studios, all that stuff. It's a really awesome machine, and at three thousand dollars, I myself, if I have, if I could save up, I, that's a great machine in terms of the, the compactness, the design, and, and apparently it's like super quiet. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, nonetheless, again, that's a pro machine, so I, I understand the pricing model. Though I don't like, like I said, the control in terms of the hardware. I was talking with my friend Mobile Phone two thousand three, who helped me cover the event, and he mentioned a really interesting thing. With a lot of this hardware that's soldered in, the issue is once it fails and you can't hot swap a graphics card or something like that, you're going to have to take it back to Apple and that's just going to be a huge hassle. Um, so that's one downside to the Mac Pro. That said, let's talk about the iPad Air, the iPad Mini. I think the iPad Air is an interesting name. I mean, I guess we saw that with the MacBook Air, the lighter, and, and they're, they're touting that, the power of lightness. Um, I really want to hold one. You know, it's something that you got to feel. It's a one pound. They definitely cut the weight. And it's a thinner bezel. A lot of people like that on the mini. So I'm going to be interested. I think there's still this market for the full size iPad and and um, these people who like these full on screens with the Retina and all that. So I think the iPad Air will appeal to those users who want it just a little bit more portable. The iPad Mini, um, that's again the iPad Mini second gen, all that much more greater. You know, you expected that tiny boost in price just because of the sacrifice for the Retina display, which costs more in terms of manufacturing. That said, I don't know so much about the, they only slashed the price of the first gen to 329, which is considerably not bad. I think they could have gone a little bit lower. I don't like how they, I'm guessing the iPad 2 makes enough sales in terms to keep it in the market, but Apple did a couple of things in this, in this keynote that kind of I was speculative about in terms of the unifying line. Usually you saw that push for the iPhone or the when the iPhone 5 and the iPad 4th gen came out We saw that push for this lightning connector. We saw this push to unify across the iOS hardware lineup This lightning connector and then they kept the 4s they phased out the 5 for the 5c um, They kept the iPad 2 which is an extremely old device I don't even I don't, I don't even think that has retina display, but I'm guessing they're keeping this in terms of margin I guess there is a profit margin um, that they're achieving from this. Otherwise, I don't really see why they would keep that iPad 2 in the lineup because now it's like iPad mini, iPad 2, iPad mini second gen, iPad Air. Um, I really don't know if they if they should have kept that in the lineup, but again, I guess if it's a profit margin, I don't know the numbers, then it's, it's viable to keep around. Um, that said, they also did some other small inconsistencies, I think, in terms of um, just the, the changes they made in, in some small things. The Touch ID, I think that's something, I think the only reason they didn't integrate Touch ID is just the whole planned obsolescence. They need something for the next generation, um, which kind of sucks at the same time. I understand it's a business, it's a business model, planned obsolescence, it allows them. And I'm pretty sure they have an iPad Air out there with Touch ID already. It's not so much the technology that's hard to integrate. I think they're just waiting for the next generation to be like, hey, this one has Touch ID, that would make people want to buy it. But I think... Again, in that terms of unifying, they just released the 5S. I think if they really wanted to push Touch ID, now would have been the time to integrate it into the Mini and the iPad Air, in my opinion. Um, again, just those small things. Apple is known for really unifying across the line. It was just really interesting for me to see them keep the iPad 2. It was interesting for me to see them 
not integrate touch id and, and do some of these small things even the gold i mean that's such a that's like a personal thing i really want to see the gold on the ipad because i'm thinking about picking up the ipad mini second gen now um i think that's just thing if they're going to announce that on the 5s why not go gold on the ipads i don't know maybe that's material cost because it's a bigger surface to cover in terms of hardware who knows anyways guys that's my full opinions and thoughts on the october 22nd event I think nowadays, it, uh, me and my friend mobile phone or Duncan talked about this. It is hard to be excited, to be shocked and awed with events like this, especially for myself, like a tech journalist. You know what's coming up. You know what's announced. It's not just Apple. It's any company that's really in the spotlight. Stuff tends to get leaked. T stuff gets to ten stuff tends to get pushed out there early. People make videos on it. I do it myself. Um, so it's hard to be super excited. And and I think to the public eye, yes, Apple is doing great things. They're going to obviously make super sales off of these. Nonetheless, I think one quote that uh, Cook mentioned during the keynote saying something along the lines of, you know, um, the fact that this is what matters to us, people, what people buy. And I think that really defines quality, in my opinion, quality of a product. It's what the consumers buy. I don't necessarily, you know, if you have a grudge against Apple or if you have a grudge against Android, what the people buy, what's profitable at the end of the day uh, in terms of business. And, uh, and applying that to their shareholders and all this stuff down the chain, what people buy to me justifies quality in the overall scheme of things. Yes, you may have personal preference over this brand and that brand, and that's great. But again, in the bigger picture of things, these aren't products just for geeks. These are products for the common consumer. That said, guys, love to hear your own thoughts on this. I think there were some changes that Apple you know, messed up on, kind of odd changes. But for the most part, we expected the hardware. We got the hardware faster, better, thinner all the jazz. You can read all my content over at digitaldojos.com, guys. I thank you for tuning in for this 12-minute uh, long uh, overview, and I will catch you all in the next video.